So it's it, tasting a, a, a base spirit, you get different notes. And from those notes, it can help you know, okay, I'm getting this nutty note. Let me pair it with this. Or I'm getting this, um, this uh, what's the good one? vanilla flavor. Let me pair it with a vanilla mixer of some sort. So there's a lot of ways you can drink, but understanding your base spirit will help you enhance that experience. Hi, and welcome to the Liquor Connoisseur. I'm Crystal. I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Did you forget who you are? Well, no, I'm like, we're used to have, we're not, we don't normally do it like this with guests. Today we have a special guest with us. We have Gabs Hayes, who is a mindset and lifestyle strategist. I want to make sure we, we, we everyone authentically knows who you are. Yeah, that's a good word. That's what I'm here for. That's what I, my vibe is. So yeah, I'm Gabs Hayes. I am a mindset and lifestyle strategist who spends time uh, helping people tackle the not enough feeling and replace their self-doubt with how do they show up confidently and authentically with who they are. And I'm so excited to be here today because this particular episode has been almost 11 months in the making. And so I'm proud of us for finally making it happen. I am too. So just a little backstory. I've known Gabs for almost two years now. And we had talked before, prior to her, we had talked about having this podcast for three years. And then, you know, I was like, you guys just, just do it. Get drunk, film yourselves. You know, everybody's like, you know, just, just get out there and do it. And then, and then Gabs here um, threatened me one day. And uh, so we, we did it. <laughs> here we are. Um, and so thank you. Yeah, and the last time I was there at the liquor library, it was like a full blown set up there. I was so proud and so excited. Yes, yes, and you've helped us uh, with some of the uh, offerings we have in the library with the the yayo that we reviewed a few months back. So glad for that. So yeah. that was a funny story, and <laughs> it's one of those stories where we all have a version of the truth. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so what happened was. Gabs was going to come stay with us a few days. We're going to do some brainstorming sessions. And I was like, okay, well, you're, you're in Florida. Like, can you bring me some stuff I can't get here? And so I had a list of Yayo, Fortaleza, and some other um, tequila brands. And she sent her husband Dom out on a Tuesday night <laughs> to try to find some of the bottles on our list. And I believe he, we did get the Yayo. He threw in a bonus bottle with Ticolino. Uh, he did actually find a bottle of Fortaleza, which that is not something you just find in the wild. Dom for the win. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You're the real MVP. He went to like two or three stores that night, if I'm not mistaken, and he found it. He found a bottle of Fortaleza. But I just I couldn't see myself paying secondary prices. So I was just like. Yeah, it was outrageous. He was like, we can get it right now. I was like, man, I just. Uh. <laughs> It was up there. But we are he he is our top fan and we appreciate him for that. Thanks. He is a good one. So with Gabs Hayes, I, I love your weekly emails. Your podcast is amazing. Uh tell us how you got started with that. Wow. So a podcast I will say was something that was just a bucket list thing for me that I was like, nope. Everyone talks about how much work they are and how cumbersome it can be. And for some reason, this person who's not afraid of working hard and doing crazy things always just said, okay, well, that's the one thing that was like going to tip me over the edge. Um, so I had decided I wasn't going to do it. And then about two years ago, I also started taking what I call CEO sabbaticals, where I go away for usually a weekend by myself to work on my business instead of in it and spend time getting really strategic. And I took this microphone with me with zero intentions. And then I was just having some really good journaling sessions where I realized 
these breakthroughs that I have been going through and the things that I have been experiencing, it's almost selfish of me to keep them to myself. And so I sat in that hotel room that weekend and recorded five weeks worth of uh, episodes and intentionally kept them to 10 minutes or less. So that way you can you know, catch them on a go or while you're getting dressed in the morning. So it doesn't feel like a big chore to keep up with them. And I just got done doing my second round of them. And I'm getting that same feedback of just the, the 10 minutes is really powerful. The lessons are very powerful. And so something in that weekend was right that somebody else needed to hear the same lessons that I was going through. And so I've been really happy to record and share those and get really vulnerable with what it looks like when you are trying to chase a life of authenticity. Yeah, there. Uh, every week you hit me hard. I'm just like, oh man, she understands <laughs> like everything I, I've, I've been through. I'm just like, get, get out of my head. Like, it's almost <laughs> like it's right there when I need it, every episode that comes out. And so I appreciate that. It's been a great journey of understanding who I am and to be more authentic even with with our own podcast to be more when I look at our some of our first ones I was kind of robotic so (laughs) you know just learning more about myself and being who I am you know being able to laugh and and not just throw out the facts of of spirit so uh, it's been a great journey for me as well and that 10 minutes so the the weekly email is just kind of another piece of that capturing people where they are and, and what makes sense for where they you know take in information the best Um, But also, I have just been so gracious and grateful to be on the side of you as you've walked your own journey of just figuring out what makes you the best version of Crystal and seeing you chase after that more and more. And I love it so much. So with part of what we do here at Liquor Connoisseur, we we have an educational educational piece to uh, our spirit reviews. And that's been something important to me given how I was raised with alcohol is bad you know it leads to alcoholism we've got so many alcoholics if you if you knew what I'd seen growing up and so for me this has been a good way to get out of that and really learn myself that alcohol is an experience it's what you make it Um, I tend to to drink to remember not to forget so I like to make sure that when I'm having a nice beverage uh that it's, you know i'm experiencing who who am i experiencing it with we've talked a little bit about those you know there's so much trauma and stigma around alcohol but it doesn't have to be so what is your advice around people that are kind of stuck on these well i can't do this because this happened to such and such or you know last time this happened how do we break free from that one saying i've been leaning into a lot lately is Life is meant to be loved and enjoyed and not be regrettable. And so I think if you find yourself leaning into whatever it may be, if it's cannabis, if it's alcohol, if it's dancing, if it's hiking, you know, whatever it may be that is maybe quote unquote non-traditional from what you were brought up in or what your current beliefs are, but you have a desire to experience it, that desire is not necessarily going to go away. You may bury it further and further down. You may find ways to occupy yourself with other things. But at the end of the day, are you going to regret that you didn't go after that experience? And so I love that you all, you know, both really talk about liquor from an experience perspective, because that's exactly what hobbies are meant to be. They are supposed to bring experiences to you that you don't necessarily see in everyday life or that breaks you out of the monotony of the day to day. And you guys have been able to bring that to the market. And I'm very thankful, you know, that you're doing that because more and more people need to give themselves that permission. Because as much as I wish I could tell you someone like me or a counselor or a parent or anyone could tell you, just go do what you want to do. At the end of the day, you're the only person who can truly give yourself that permission. So you've got to start looking inside and figure out why do you want that? Why are you chasing that experience? And then just go freaking do it going to be messy. Like you said, right? Like the first few episodes of the podcast, they were robotic or you you tweak things as you go. I mean, same thing with the way you share the podcast, right? All of that changes as you go, but it's because you learn from each experience and then decide, do you want to keep doing it that way or do it different the next time? No, that is definitely true. One of, the, one of my favorite lines from you is balance is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more about how you got to that point. And I am sure it has, (laughs) 
everyone saying, yes, it, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I think much like you in the beginning of my entrepreneur journey, it was very robotic as well. I left being a full-time consultant and opened up a consulting firm doing the exact same thing that I was doing full-time. And then I started chasing more passionate work, things that really were aligned with who I was and the impact I wanted to make on this world. And balance became even harder to achieve because it wasn't, don't allow work to interfere with my life anymore. It was, I am doing my life's work every day. So it felt really hard to like cut between one or the other. And then also I have three small kids. So, you know, that's always been a challenge is how do you balance and, or, you know, quote unquote, chase this balance that we've been told to find where it's like, you need to be perfectly a hundred percent available across the board in every role that you play. And that just is not true. There are going to be times where your work or your career need more of you. And there's definitely going to be times where your home life needs more of you. And we should not feel guilty for leaning into one or the other or multiple different things, depending on what's going on that day, that week, that hour. And so I started talking about this with more and more women in particular, where I was like, I've never seen anyone find balance. I've never actually seen it happen. But why do we keep chasing it? And so that's when I finally just said, fuck it. Balance is bullshit. We're going to stop chasing it. And we're going to just enjoy our lives. So is it more of a work-life incorporation than a balance? Yeah, I think that's a beautiful way to talk about it because I see it as making space for what makes you the best version of you. And so what that space looks like is going to be different at different times of your life, different phases. uh, But do you feel comfortable unapologetically chasing what makes you the best you? Yeah, I I agree with that as well because doing an alcohol podcast is not always positively seen and i i don't know about you but i've been asked a couple times like what made you do this like aren't you afraid you're gonna lose out on opportunities and i'm like nope not anymore this is a gig economy (laughs) (laughs) but but also it's it's like chasing your dreams what makes me happy and if i can do those few things that do make me happy it's gonna make me much more productive when i'm at work um, because for me, I look at it as, okay, if I can do these things that I, you know, I may not want to do, I, once I finish them, I can go do the things I love. To do. I just told my 13 year old that about 30 minutes ago, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> it's summertime. And I was like, if you would just get up and do what you're supposed to do the first 20, 30 minutes of your day, you've got the rest of your day to do whatever you want. Exactly. Uh, Roger, anything from your perspective that you see any difference um to your point i've seen some of the wildest comments ever (laughs) Uh, from alcohol bad and it's poison and my response is generally sure it is um (laughs) i mean we got one someone said something about jesus and i was like but he turned water into wine (laughs) (laughs) yeah that, that was funny but i It's like, man, you took the time out of your day to make that comment. So I will respond back um, and just let you know we're we're having some fun here while educating people. I just want to pull them away from the the real bad of it. Because like you said, we're we're drinking to remember, not to forget. And and we want these, these special moments. And I believe in the beginning, most people are drinking to harm themselves you know they're they're not they're not doing it to necessarily have a good time they're really just trying to overindulge and that is the opposite of what we are trying to get people to do we want them to enjoy sip fellowship network these are things and typically we we drink meat but that's not what we're asking everyone to do that's what we prefer uh we also do do mixed drinks. Uh, today we're actually having some black mama vodka mixed with some uh, watermelon uh, water mixed with lemonade. Um, so it's it, tasting a, a, a base spirit. You get different notes, and from those notes, 
it can help you know, okay, I'm getting this nutty note. Let me pair it with this, or I'm getting this, um, this, um, what's the good one? Vanilla flavor. Yeah. Let me pair it with a vanilla mixer or some sort. So there's a lot of ways you can drink, but understanding your base spirit will help you enhance that experience of whatever it is you choose to, to mix with. Well, and I love to, Roger, you brought up networking and I'll just say this because I've seen what chasing after this has done for you guys on the back end, right? Like one, I get to see you guys as a couple spending much more time together and much more intentional time because you're chasing after and doing this project together. But I absolutely love almost every single weekend, Crystal's texting me about something, you know, that you guys have gone to do or seen or met up with someone or, you know, are talking to someone new and building relationships literally across the country because of this shared hobby. And I think that is the really powerful part of this is when you're doing something because it's what you love and not what society says you should love or shouldn't love. You find other people, you find that community and life is meant to be done with other people. And so it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be in your backyard. But once you start really being who you are, you find similar people who love you for that same reason. And then what a beautiful thing to be able to just be you every day without a mask and just show up as who you are. Oh, man, it's so, so nice. Being in the corporate world, that can be hard. <laughs> and so this definitely helps with me understand who I am so that I can show up authentically. Um, I'm excited to keep going. Like right now, we're planning our one year. We knew when we started, we'd be here after one year. I think statistically, if you can make it past 25 episodes, you're going to make it. And yeah. so we've done that. Yeah, we've done that. We <laughs> keep pushing that. This has been fun. And the space that we're in has been more than welcoming. Yeah. I. I shouldn't be shocked at this point because it just keeps happening, but I feel like every time we get introduced to another person in the industry, whether it be bartending, distilling, any of the content creators, they're always just excited to see us, and we're excited to see them, and we just nerd out this thing, over this distilling thing, over this vodka or bourbon, whatever. We just nerd out together. We're just like, ooh! You like it too. Okay, let's let's get to what do you think about this? And we should work together. Okay, we'll catch up with you in a couple of weeks. And and they're serious. Yeah. They're being very genuine with us. And mm-hmm. we meet up and it's just magic. It's I I love it. Uh, so we've been enjoying that. Uh just you just you just never know in, unless you ask. And so being an introvert, yep. I was always just watching, like, oh, that'd be so cool to do. And then I have, you know, I've been building a community with lots of awesome people like you who are like, go, just, just ask, just put it out there. And so I've been doing that and no one has said no. I think that's a really powerful statement that I want to make sure the audience understands. Reaching out and asking to do a collaboration, to have a coffee chat, to meet up with someone. If you're really passionate about the work that you're doing, the worst that can happen when you do that is they say no. But there are so many best things that can happen. And so, you know, I think you guys are a beautiful testament of that, of just reaching out and starting to build relationships. And then you never know what's going to come on the other side of them. So one of the things that Gabby and I have done every week is we have like a uh, what are we calling it? Brainstorm buddy. Brainstorm battle buddy. Yes, that's it. And so that's been so cool to have every week. So some of the cool things you see us do have come out of those conversations. And then I've also taken those conversations to other groups that I have uh, to help other entrepreneurs on their journey as well. So it's been really cool to see how our community has grown and how it's shaped and influenced others. Yeah, I, those week calls are just everything because it is one of those places, right, where you let every guard, every mask down that you have. And it's a place for us to just straight up say, like, this is what I'm struggling with. Or I think more than anything, this is what has me stuck right now. 
this is the thing that I can't find the answer to on my own, or I'm just not sure of. So I haven't done it or done anything with it yet. And it's really nice to just have someone else to bounce those ideas off of. Um, because obviously you guys are doing this together, right? So you guys can, can in some ways, do it together and, and ask some of those questions. But even when you have a partner, you're so close to the work that you're doing. It's very hard sometimes to see your own blind spots or see gaps that you have. And so there's, there is something about that community where you trust them enough to let them in, to let them know what's going through your mind or what you're thinking of or what you're struggling with. And sometimes it's nothing more than someone else validating like, yeah, I'm seeing the same thing or I'm experiencing the same thing. But just that small validation of doing it with someone else is enough to keep you moving in the right direction. Yeah. And, and for me, again, it's also getting out of my comfort zone. Uh, I love being comfortable. <laughs> catch me out. Catch me at the house in a hoodie. Uh, <laughs> but I, I love I love these group sessions because they put they they push me. And sometimes I don't understand, but I know I need to do it. So I'll be like, okay, I got to chew on that for a minute. Let me let me think about that to see how I can get comfortable in being uncomfortable to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I know what Gab's haze that Gab's effect has done for me. That that's something I've always said is is that Gabrielle has an effect. I mean, she's going to make an impact no matter where she goes. I can't wait to be there in the audience when she's on on the big stage. Uh, so what is next for Gab's Haze? What's coming? What's actually coming up? Oh my gosh. So many things. I actually just got done doing my next round of content calendar and I was like struggling because I have so many awesome things that I want to talk about. Um, so I think first and foremost, I chased one of my own big dreams and am becoming an author this month. So my first book comes out on June 20th. And really, really excited about that. It's all about stories of women overcoming adversity. So all of us have had our own traumas and our own challenges, but how do you work through those to show up in the life that you want? Um, And then I'm also launching a community. So overwhelmed and over it. It's a pay what you can community. I say it's like that sisterhood group chat where like you just need someone to be like, no, keep yourself accountable, make sure you're showing up the way you want and or just have someone be like, yeah, you're headed in the right direction. Keep going. And so really excited about that. Because to me, that's how I can bring the Gabs effect to more people and really open the doors that it's all of us coming together as a community to make our dreams happen and to live the lives that we want to live. And yes, Crystal, as you always say, my goal is always get on those big stages um, more so that I can share the message so that more people can hear it. Um, because I, I think if you talk to anyone who works in healthcare and later life and, you know, mainly ones who are seeing most of their patients pass on, the number one thing that they see, hear and experience every day is regret for things that they did not do in their life instead of regret for things that they did do. And so I'm a firm believer and we only have one shot at this thing called life. And so we better show up and take advantage of every time we have. No, that's well said. It's it's very true. And it's it's opened me up to where it's like, dang, I should have done this years ago. But I didn't have I didn't have a gabs in my life at that point. <laughs> But it's just well, you got cool. a gabs and a few airplane trips now, so we're we're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been out of the country since hanging with you. Like, I've done a lot of a lot of cool, amazing things. So, thank you. And again, that gabs effect is powerful. It, it really is. Um, I actually, Roger, I've already bought my my copy of the book. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it, it's going to be autographed. Oh, no pressure. Sign me up. I need one too. I'm gonna have my own. I want to sign too. Yeah. So if you'll yeah, say this, I'm... we'll post it. And so if any of okay, you yeah. want to get a copy as well. And uh you have a yeah, we're gonna just... playlist as well. So we can get your, your podcast link. We'll put that out there so everyone can hear again. It's ten minutes. It's it's life changing in ten minutes. And again, every week. I resonate with with the the content, and I'm just like, man, how did you know I was going through that today? Or how did you know? (laughs) Because it's really it's like calling you out in a good way. Because I'm telling you about the exact same thing that I'm going through. So (laughs) yeah, it's it's really nice to have that. And like I said, accountability. 
having an accountability partner is huge. Having multiple accountability partners really ensures you're going you're gonna to do what you need. And so that's what I have with these two right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, man, we just appreciate you being here, Gabs. And uh, hopefully more, you know, we, we look for more and more people to find you and to be inspired by the Gabs effect. Well, thank you for having me. I cannot wait. We're going to have to plan my next trip to the liquor library because my home away from home is calling me. Yes. <laughs> you are always invited. We'll have to get, we need to get you a library card. Yeah, we'll get those made. <laughs> we'll get those made. <laughs> Look, see? All right. Next brainstorm battle by chat. I'm going to be checking in on where the welcome boxes are because now I want a library card in them. I, I will add it to the whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, Gabs. And we will post all of Gabs' links and information. Definitely check out her book. Her story is powerful. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, and share. And uh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>